A CDR is a variation of the compact disc invented by Philips and Sony. CDR is a right once read many optical medium, although the whole disc does not have to be entirely written in the same session. CDR retains a high level of compatibility with standard CD readers, unlike CDRW, which can be rewritten but is not capable of playing on many readers. History The CDX, originally named CD Write Once, specification was first published in 1988 by Philips and Sony in the Orange Book. The Orange Book consists of several parts, furnishing details of the CDO, CDMO, and CDRW. The latest editions have abandoned the use of the term CDWO in favor of CDR, while CDMO were used very little. Written CDRS and CDRWs are, in the aspect of low-level encoding and data format, fully compatible with the audio CD and data CD standards. This means they use 8 to 14 modulation, CISC error correction, and, for CD-ROM, the third error correction layer defined in the yellow book. Properly written CDR discs on blanks of less than 80 minutes length are fully compatible with the audio CD and CD-ROM standards in all details including physical specifications. 80-minute CDR discs marginally violate the Red Book physical format specifications, and longer discs are non-compliant. CDRW discs have lower reflectivity than CDR or pressed CDs and for this reason cannot meet the Red Book standard. Some hardware compatible with Red Book CDs may have difficulty reading CDRS and, because of their lower reflectivity, especially CDRWs. To the extent that CD hardware can read extended length disks or CDRW disks, it is because that hardware has capability beyond the minimum required by the Red Book and Yellow Book standards. CDR recording systems available in 1990 were similar to the washing machine sized Meridian CD publisher, based on the two piece rack mount Yamaha PDS audio recorder costing $35,000 not including the required external ECC circuitry for data encoding, SCSI hard drive subsystem, and MS-DOS control computer. By 1992, the cost of typical recorders was down to $10 a Euro 12,000, and in September 1995, Hewlett-Packard introduced its Model 4020A manufactured by Philips, which, at $995, was the first recorder to cost less than $1,000. The dye materials developed by Taiyo Yudin made it possible for CDR discs to be compatible with audio CD and CD-ROM discs. Initially, in the United States, there was a market separation between music CDRS and data CDRS, the former being several times more expensive than the latter due to industry copyright arrangements with the RIAA. Physically, there is no difference between the discs save for the disc application flag that identifies their type. Standalone audio recorders will only accept music CDRS to enforce the RIAA arrangement, while computer CDR drives can use either type of media to burn either type of content. Physical characteristics A standard CDR is a 1.2 ohm thick disc made of polycarbonate about 120 ohm or 80 ohm diameter. The 120 ohm disc has a storage capacity of 74 minutes of audio or 650 megabytes of data. CDRRWs are available with capacities of 80 minutes of audio or 737,280,000 bytes, which they achieve by molding the disc at the tightest allowable tolerances specified in the Orange Book CDR CDRW standards. The engineering margin that was reserved for manufacturing tolerance has been used for data capacity instead, leaving no tolerance for manufacturing. For these disks to be truly compliant with the Orange Book standard, the manufacturing process must be perfect. Despite the foregoing, most CDRS on the market have an 80-minute capacity. There are also 90 minute per 790 megabytes and 99 minute per 870 megabytes disks although they are less common. Also, due to the limitations of the data structures in the ATIP, 90 and 99 minute blanks will identify as 80 minute ones. Therefore, in order to use the additional capacity, these disks have to be burned using overburn options in the CD recording software. Some drives use special techniques, 
such as Plexter's GigaRec or Sanyo's HD Burn, to write more data onto a given disk. These techniques are inherently deviations from the compact disk standards, making the recorded disks proprietary formatted and not fully compatible with standard CD players and drives. However, in certain applications where disks will not be distributed or exchanged outside a private group and will not be archived for a long time, a proprietary format may be an acceptable way to obtain greater capacity. The greatest risk in using such a proprietary data storage format, assuming that it works reliably as designed, is that it may be difficult or impossible to repair or replace the hardware used to read the media if it fails, is damaged, or is lost after its original vendor discontinues it. Nothing in the red, yellow or orange book standards prohibits disk reading writing devices from having the capacity to read or write disks beyond the compact disk standards. The standards do require disks to meet precise requirements in order to be called compact disks, but the other disks may be called by other names. If this were not true, no DVD drive could legally bear the compact disk logo. While disk players and drives may have capabilities beyond the standards, enabling them to read and write non-standard disks, there is no assurance, in the absence of explicit additional manufacturer specifications beyond normal compact disk logo certification, that any particular player or drive will perform beyond the standards at all or consistently. Furthermore, if the same device with no explicit performance specs beyond the compact disk logo initially handles non-standard disks reliably, there is no assurance that it will not later stop doing so, and in that case, there is no assurance that it can be made to do so again by service or adjustment. Therefore, disks with capacities larger than 650 megabytes, and especially those larger than 700 megabytes, are less interchangeable among players' drives than standard disks and are not very suitable for archival use, as their readability on future equipment, or even on the same equipment at a future time, is not assured, even under the assumption that the disks will not degrade at all. The polycarbonate disk contains a spiral groove, called the pre-groove, to guide the laser beam upon writing and reading information. The pre-groove is molded into the top side of the polycarbonate disk, where the pits and lands would be molded if it were a pressed red book CD. The bottom side, which faces the laser beam in the player or drive, is flat and smooth. The polycarbonate disc is coated on the pre-groove side with a very thin layer of organic dye. Then, on top of the dye is coated a thin, reflecting layer of silver, a silver alloy, or gold. Finally, a protective coating of a photopolymerizable lacquer is applied on top of the metal reflector and cured with UV light. A blank CDR is not empty. The pre-groove has a wobble, which helps the writing laser to stay on track and to write the data to the disk at a constant rate. Maintaining a constant rate is essential to ensure proper size and spacing of the pits and lands burned into the dye layer. As well as providing timing information, the ATIP is also a data track containing information about the CDR manufacturer, the dye used and media information. The pre-groove is not destroyed when the data are written to the CDR, a point which some copy protection schemes use to distinguish copies from an original CD. There are three basic formulations of dye used in CDRS, Sunim dye CDRS were the earliest ones developed, and their formulation is patented by Taiyo Yudin. CDRS based on this dye are mostly green in color. The earlier models were very chemically unstable and this made Sunim based discs unsuitable for archival use. They could fade and become unreadable in a few years. Many manufacturers like Taiyo Yudin use proprietary chemical additives to make more stable Sunim discs. Older Sunim dye based CDRS, as well as all the hybrid dyes based on Sunim, were very sensitive to UV rays and could have become unreadable after only a few days if they were exposed to direct sunlight. Although the additives used have made Sunim more stable, it is still the most sensitive of the dyes in UV rays. A common mistake users make is to leave the CDRS with the clear surface upwards, in order to protect it from scratches, as this lets the sun hit the recording surface directly. Phtalosianin dye CDRS are usually silver, gold or light green. The patents on Phtalosianin CDRS are held by Mitzi and Cuba Speciality Chemicals. 
Italocyanine is a natively stable dye and CDRS based on this are often given a rated lifetime of hundreds of years. Unlike cyanine, Phtalocyanine is less resistant to UV rays and CDRS based on this dye show signs of degradation only after two weeks of direct sunlight exposure. However, Phtalocyanine is more sensitive than cyanine to writing laser power calibration, meaning that the power level used by the writing laser has to be more accurately adjusted for the disk in order to get a good recording. This may erode the benefits of dye stability, as marginally written disks will lose data after less dye degradation than well written disks. Azu dye CDRS are dark blue in color, and their formulation is patented by Mitsubishi Chemical Corporation. Azu dye is also chemically stable, and Azu CDRS are typically rated with a lifetime of decades. Azu is the most resistant dye against UV rays and begins to degrade only after the third or fourth week of direct sunlight exposure. More modern implementations of this kind of dye include Super Azu which is not as deep blue as the earlier metal Azu. This change of composition was necessary in order to achieve faster writing speeds. There are many hybrid variations of the dye formulations, such as Formazun by Kodak. Unfortunately, many manufacturers have added additional coloring to disguise their unstable cyanine CDRS in the past, so the formulation of a disc cannot be determined based purely on its color. Similarly, a gold reflective layer does not guarantee use of phtalocyanine dye. The quality of the disc is also not only dependent on the dye used, it is also influenced by sealing, the top layer, the reflective layer, and the polycarbonate. Simply choosing a disc based on its dye type may be problematic. Furthermore, correct power calibration of the laser and the writer, as well as correct timing of the laser pulses, stable disc speed, and so on, is critical to not only the immediate readability but the longevity of the recorded disc, so for archiving it is important to have not only a high-quality disc but a high-quality writer. In fact, a high-quality writer may produce adequate results with medium-quality media, but high-quality media cannot compensate for a mediocre writer, and discs written by such a writer cannot achieve their maximum potential archival lifetime. Speed, these times only include the actual optical writing pass over the disc. For most disc recording operations, additional time is used for overhead processes, such as organizing the files and tracks which adds to the theoretical minimum total time required to produce a disk. At the lowest write speeds, this overhead takes so much less time than the actual disk writing pass that it may be negligible, but at higher write speeds, the overhead time becomes a larger proportion of the overall time taken to produce a finished disk and may add significantly to it. Also, above 20 a speed drives user's own CLV or CAV strategy where the advertised maximum speed is only reached near the outer rim of the disk. This is not taken into account by the above table. Writing methods, the blank disk has a pre-groove track onto which the data are written. The pre-groove track, which also contains timing information, ensures that the recorder follows the same spiral path as a conventional CD. A CD recorder writes data to a CDR disk by pulsing its laser to heat areas of the organic dye layer. The writing process does not produce indentations. Instead, the heat permanently changes the optical properties of the dye, changing the reflectivity of those areas. Using a low laser power, so as not to further alter the dye, the disk is read back in the same way as a CD-ROM. However, the reflected light is modulated not by pits, but by the alternating regions of heated and unaltered dye. The change of the intensity of the reflected laser radiation is transformed into an electrical signal, from which the digital information is recovered. Once a section of a CDR is written, it cannot be erased or rewritten, unlike a CDRW. A CDR can be recorded in multiple sessions. A CD recorder can write to a CDR using several methods including, disk at once a euro the whole CDR is written in one session with no gaps and the disk is closed meaning no more data can be added and the CDR effectively becomes a standard read-only CD. With no gaps between the tracks the disk at once format is useful for live audio recordings. 
track at once a Euro data are written to the CD or one track at a time but the CD is left open for further recording at a later stage. It also allows data and audio to reside on the same CDR. Packet writing a Euro used to record data to a CDR in packets, allowing extra information to be appended to a disk at a later time, or for information on the disk to be made invisible. In this way, CDR can emulate CDRW. However, each time information on the disk is altered, more data has to be written to the disk. There can be compatibility issues with this format and some CD drives. With careful examination, the written and unwritten areas can be distinguished by the naked eye. CDRS are written from the center outwards, so the written area appears as an inner band with slightly different shading. Lifespan, real-life tests have revealed that some CDRS degrade quickly even if stored normally. The quality of a CDR disk has a large and direct influence on loan Gavita Euro low-quality disks should not be expected to last very long. According to research conducted by J. Podero, CDRS are expected to have an average life expectancy of 10 years. Branding isn't a reliable guide to quality, because many brands do not manufacture their own disks. Instead they are sourced from different manufacturers of varying quality. For best results, the actual manufacturer and material components of each batch of disks should be verified. Burned CDRS suffer from material degradation, just like most writable media. CDR media have an internal layer of dye used to store data. In a CDRW disk, the recording layer is made of an alloy of silver and other metals a euro indium, antimony, and tellurium. In CDR media, the dye itself can degrade, causing data to become unreadable. As well as degradation of the dye, failure of a CDR can be due to the reflective surface. While silver is less expensive and more widely used, it is more prone to oxidation resulting in a non-reflecting surface. Gold on the other hand, although more expensive and no longer widely used, is an inert material, so gold-based CDRS do not suffer from this problem. Manufacturers have estimated that the longevity of gold-based CDRS to be as high as 100 years. Labeling it is recommended if using adhesive backed paper labels that the labels be specially made for CDRS. A balanced CD vibrates only slightly when rotated at high speed. Bad or improperly made labels, or labels applied off center, unbalance the CD and can cause it to vibrate when it spins, which causes read errors and even risks damaging the drive. A professional alternative to CD labels is pre-printed CDs using a five-color silk screen or offset press. Using a permanent marker pen is also a common practice. However, solvents from such pens can affect the dye layer. Disposal, data confidentiality, since CDRS in general cannot be logically erased to any degree, the disposal of CDRS presents a possible security issue if they contain sensitive slash private data. Destroying the data requires physically destroying the disk or data layer. Heating the disk in a microwave oven for 10 euro 15 seconds effectively destroys the data layer by causing arcing in the metal reflective layer, but this same arcing may cause damage or excessive wear to the microwave oven. Many office paper shredders are also designed to shred CDs. Some recent burners support erase operations on a media, by overwriting the stored data with strong laser power although the erased area cannot be overwritten with new data. Recycling, the polycarbonate material and possible gold or silver in the reflective layer would make CDRS highly recyclable. However, the polycarbonate is of very little value and the quantity of precious metals is so small that it is not profitable to recover them. Consequently, recyclers that accept CDRS typically do not offer compensation for donating or transporting the materials. See also, Absolute Time and Pre-Groove, Blu-ray Disc, CD Recorder, CD Caddy, CD-ROM, GD-ROM, CD-RW, DVD-RW, DVD, DVD-R, DVD-plus-R, DVD-plus-ADL, HD-DVD, Label Flash, Lightscribe, Multi-Level Recording, An Obsolete Technology, Optical Disc Authoring, Rainbow Books, References. External Links. ECMA 394, 
recordable compact disc system CD or multi speed, the CD RFAQ, Understanding CDR and CDRW by Hugh Bennett.